This is Jamestown Safiri, the first successful English settlement in North America. In fact, this is historic Jamestown, the original site where it all began in 1607. Captain John Smith lived here, and we know Pocahontas visited many times. Let's look inside this church. This is also the site where the first General Assembly met back in 1619. Whoa, 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 slow down, Safiri. There are archaeologists working here. Sorry, Daddy. It doesn't look like there's anything here but bricks and dirt. How does digging in the ground tell us what happened a long time ago? You know how the history books tell us stories about things that people said, did, and thought? Well, archaeologists are people that find artifacts in the ground that tell the same stories. Artifacts. An artifact is an object or a tool that tells people about the past. Well, I guess I'm going to have to see some artifacts to believe in them. Mm. Let's see. Well, maybe over here there's something that you can look at. Oops! Oh dear. So sorry about that. <clears throat> I am the Guardian of Time, specializing in Jamestown in the year 1619. It's my job to keep time moving along and to make sure objects from the past make it to the present. So archaeologists can find them, then they and you can learn about history. You see, I'm certified. Cool. Wait, how do you know my name? Well, <laughs> I know your name because you, Safiri, are a part of history too. And in fact, you're a very special girl. You're destined for an important mission. Why, even your name means journey. That's what my grandmother told me about my name. So what kind of mission are you talking about? Well, you see, it seems time has, well, misplaced five different objects from Jamestown's history in the year 1619. That year saw many firsts for America, Safiri. I need your help to find them. We need those objects so they can continue teaching people stories of the past and why they matter. My daddy did tell me that objects can tell stories about the past. Hmm. I'll help you find them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But wait. How do I go back in time? Leave that to me. Look around. History, it's everywhere. <laughs> Open your mind up and you can see the past. Wow! Past, I can see it. Wow. That's it, Safiri. We are now traveling back in time. Jamestown, 1619. Cool. As we journey, there are some rules. All time travelers are invisible to the people of the past. No one can see or hear you. It's very important that you listen carefully so you can find the objects we need and learn how they can tell stories of Jamestown <laughs> 1619. Find objects, right? Once you learn about what's going on in the past by seeing it, you'll be able to spot the right object to help the story for all history. Oh? I got you, Guardian. Oh, <laughs> that's catchy. <laughs> now, Safiri, we've got to hurry. Time to learn about 1619. Time to see how the past tells us about the present. Ready? Ready, Guardian. Let's go, Safiri. <laughs> We're inside the home of one of the colonists, Safiri. They're celebrating because this happy couple just got married. What's so special about this wedding? People get married all the time. This bride didn't meet her husband like many people meet in your time. You see, the Virginia Company of London put up the money for the Jamestown settlement. 
not many English women lived in Jamestown. In fact, in the earliest years of Jamestown, Powhatan women lived among the English in the fort. So in 1619, the company started looking in England for more women to come to Virginia. Why would more women want to come to Virginia? Even though they didn't really know what to expect, many women hoped for new opportunities and a new life in Virginia. So they came over to get married in Jamestown and raise a family. Why was establishing families at Jamestown so important to them? Great question. A few women had come to Jamestown already, but many more women coming over from England to start families would help the settlement to grow stronger and become permanent. It would make it more than just a place to explore or to farm. These new families also helped the colony to feel more like a real home. These women were brave. Jamestown would not have continued if it weren't for these courageous women. They left their homes in England to come to a strange new land. Very brave and very important too. Yes, as the settlement grew, women were truly seen as part of what made the Virginia colony such a success. You should also remember that women, though very important, did not have the same rights as men when they got to Jamestown. They didn't? <laughs> not yet. In fact, it would be another 300 years before women could even vote. You see, these first women of Jamestown paved the way for the generations of Americans in the years ahead. I see. I see! Guardian! That hairpin! In the bride's hair! Ah, uh, you, you, you mean a bodkin. That's what those hairpins were called. Bodkins were worn in women's hair. The bodkin! Hold it. That's what we need! My goodness. You're right! Since women wear bodkins, the bodkins can help tell a story of how English women in Jamestown made it so successful. Bravo, bravo! You've done it! I knew you'd find the right object! Yes! Now, let's add that bodkin to our 1619 collection. Wow, everything is real again. That's right, Safiri. You see, when you find the object to tell the story, history comes to life again. It really does. Hey, I know this place. We're back in your time now and at Jamestown Settlement. Yes, Jamestown Settlement is a place you can visit where people tell stories about Jamestown. They even dress how people did. And now, thanks to you, they can keep telling those stories. But we've got more objects to find in 1619 and more history to bring back to life. Gotcha, Guardian. Let's go for it. Alrighty now. Here we go. It looks like we're inside a ship. I can feel it moving. That's right, Safiri. This ship is an English ship called the White Lion. It's a ship that's making its way to Virginia right now. Who are they? These are the very first Africans to arrive in Virginia. Actually, to arrive in all of English North America. Where did they come from? West Central Africa, from a country that's today called Angola. Earlier, another ship that came from Portugal had captured these African people against their will. How did they get on this ship, the White Lion? The crew of the White Lion encountered the Portuguese ship at sea and then took some of the Africans from the ship. The White Lion arrived at a place called Point Comfort in what is now Hampton, Virginia. That must have been really scary for them to leave their home and come to a new place what did they do with the African people when they got there? The ship's crew traded about 20 of the Africans to the Virginia Company for supplies that the crew needed. 
These Africans were transported to Jamestown and other Virginia Company settlements along the James, where they were put to work as farmers and laborers. How were they treated once they got to Virginia? Well, we're not 100% sure. Some of the early Africans were enslaved and were forced to work for their entire lives. Others were probably treated much like the indentured servants. Some may have eventually gained their freedom. While we really don't know what the status of these first Africans to arrive in Virginia was, we do know that they were treated differently than the English. So this is how Africans became a part of America. Yes, and the legacy of the first Africans can't be overestimated. Their presence has profoundly influenced the evolution of America. It's important to remember that the forced migration of the first African people began a centuries-long struggle for freedom and equality for minority groups in the United States, issues that we're still working on today. Shells wash on the shore from far away. Hmm, that's it, the shell, in that man's hand. The shell is an object that can help tell the stories of the first Africans' arrival in Jamestown. Great eye, Safiri. A shell is a great idea. What you've seen is just the beginning of Africans and their descendants in Virginia. Now, let's add that shell to our 1619 collection. In a flash, <laughs> we're back at Jamestown Settlement, where they're retelling the story of the first Africans right now, all thanks to your discovery. Yeah. <laughs> Great job. But our time travel journey is far from over. Got you, Guardian. <laughs> I think you've got it, Safiri. Now, away we go. back in 1690. You see, the colonists looked for new ways to make money for the Virginia Company so it could continue to support the settlement. And after trying many things, they found that growing tobacco for pipe smoking made the most money. Growing tobacco on American land wasn't a new idea. Indians had been using tobacco long before the English arrived. Perhaps the crops of the Powhatan Indians gave the English the idea. What else did they try? Well, they tried winemaking, cutting timber, making soap, furs. Oh, yes. Oh. <clears throat> they also tried growing mulberry trees, and from the silkworm cocoons, they tried making silk. They even dug for gold and silver. Nothing was better than growing tobacco. That's why they call tobacco Jamestown's most successful cash crop. It's the crop that made them the most money when it was sold or traded to England for things they needed. How were they able to grow so much tobacco? Well, alongside the early Africans, indentured servants from England worked for a while. But soon, the demand grew so much, they needed cheaper labor and more people. African men, women, and children were brought to the Virginia colony and enslaved to work on the plantations. That's why so many more African people were brought to Virginia to work. That's true. The success of tobacco as a cash crop led to a dependence on slave labor in Virginia and other English colonies. Thousands more African slaves were brought to the colonies during the 16, 17, and 1800s 
You see, Safiri, the legacy of tobacco and the tragedy of African slavery are forever intertwined in Virginia's history. Hmm. That pipe. In his hand. Yes. You see, pipe making also became very popular at some of the inns and stuff. That pipe! That's the object that can help tell the story of tobacco in 1619. Why, yes, that's exactly what we need. Safiri, you've done it again. Archaeologists have found pieces of these clay pipes all over Jamestown. This one's perfect. Yes! A clay tobacco pipe. Another artifact that can bring history back to life. It does! Now, let's add that clay pipe to our 1619 collection. <laughs> Jamestown Settlement. Yes! Now we still have more stories to save. More artifacts to find. Gotcha, Guardian. Let's go! Guardian, where are we now? Safiri, we're near a plantation on the James River. It's called Barclay Hundred. Near Jamestown. Let us give thanks for Why are the men you? kneeling? I, I thought their church was at Jamestown. Oh, it's Thanksgiving. Wait, what? Thanksgiving? Where's the turkey? The stuffing? The cranberries? <laughs> the pumpkin pie? Sounds delicious. <laughs> but what you see here marked the beginning of the tradition of giving thanks in English America. In fact, for centuries, the Indians who lived here had Thanksgiving ceremonies of their own. This Thanksgiving wasn't about food at the table. It was really about giving thanks the crew had made it safely across the Atlantic Ocean. Captain John Woodleaf was commander of the ship called the Margaret. When the crew left England, he was given orders that when their ship got to Virginia, they would mark the day they got there and every year on that day and keep it as a day of thanksgiving to God. That's what you're seeing right now. I can see why they are very thankful. It had to have been a long trip. You're exactly right. Voyages from England were very, very dangerous for the passengers and crew. What could archaeologists find that could help tell the story? Hmm. And forgive us our trust. That book class. That book class. Book clasps, yes, oh, book clasps. Yeah, they are very useful keeping books closed at the time because books were made of animal skins and, and you had to clasp. That clasp! On that man's Bible! The book class can help tell the stories of how Virginia held America's first English Thanksgiving ceremony and how important religion was to the colonists. Zafiri, that's brilliant! You found just the right thing to keep history alive again! Yes! Now, let's add that book clasp to our 1619 collection. <laughs> Even if there was no turkey at that Thanksgiving, I'm very thankful you spotted another artifact we needed to complete our mission. I still miss the pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh? <laughs> Got you, Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Back to business. We must make another stop in 1619 to bring history back to life. Daddy. You're right, Safiri. It's a lot like it. But this building is much older than that one. This is the Jamestown Church in 1619. Are they holding a 
church service? Oh, no. Right now they're holding a government leaders meeting. The very first one, in fact. In a church? Why, yes. The church was the only place large enough in Jamestown that they could all sit together. As the colony grew with people, so did the government. This legislative meeting is the first time a group of elected men got together to decide about their own laws in English North America. It's much like the General Assembly we have in Virginia today. I see. Who could be elected? Well, Safiri, only free men at that time could be elected to it. Those men included the colony's governor, Sir George Yardley, the governor's council members, and 22 other men. One was voted in to represent each town in the colony at the time. Those men were called Burgesses, that means citizen. Many years later, the Burgesses would become its own lawmaking group. What did they talk about in this meeting? This assembly was the first elected lawmaking group in English North America that gave some of the settlers a say in their own government. Some of the important laws they made were giving every free man the right to trade with the Indians that live nearby. They also made a law that said no Englishman could stir up trouble with the Indians. Now that things were right then, peaceful between them, the lawmakers also made going to church mandatory. And it was against the law for anyone to drink or to gamble. Uh-oh! Did they make any laws about working? Great question. They made laws to make sure what they planted made money for the Virginia company, or if they didn't, the people could be punished. Uh-oh! This also kept people trying to think of new ways to make money for the company. They wrote down everything they could and passed those words down through other books in history. Maybe this paper is an artifact. Hmm. I'm not sure paper lasts very well over 400 years. Mm, um, yes, good point. Paper is organic material after all. Uh, paper at that time was made uh, maybe of animal skin, but hmm. still. Uh, um... That's it. Guardian, that man's ring. Mm. Oh, yes, that's quite nice, isn't it? They call that a signet ring, you know? I used to have one of those when I was just a simple time traveler like yourself, and it had a nice little circle That there. ring has a seal on it, and a ring is made of metal. It would last through time to help tell a story about the very first meeting about making laws in Virginia. <laughs> My stars, you're right! And, and you know, Safiri, this meeting also shows us the start of representative democracy in America. Let's add that signet ring to our 1619 collection. for your help in finding which artifacts can bring history back to life so that everyone can keep learning about all the firsts in Jamestown 1690. Now, let's get you back to where we started our mission. Gotcha, Guardian. <laughs> Alrighty now, go, Safiri. Oh, Safiri, what did I tell you about running in here? Now, are you ready to keep exploring? Phew, I've had quite an adventure today, Daddy, and I... I can't believe it! All the artifacts we found today, they're... they're... Amazing! Yes, they are. The archaeologists have found these all over Jamestown. Now, I wonder what they are and what stories they have to tell. I know what they are. And you know, I can tell you their stories, because history is alive again. Oh, really? You know what, Safiri, you're right. <laughs> I'll say she certainly is. 
<laughs> well, Safiri, maybe one day you can be an archaeologist. Maybe, Daddy. I sure do enjoy time traveling. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see what we got here. Well, this is a clay pipe. And you see here? Oh, this is a hairpin. But it's really called a bodkin. It's what the women used in 1619. They wore it when they came to game time. Journey back through Jamestown 